This video was supposed to be part one of a series I wanted to do on a complete guide to getting good audio for YouTube videos and streams and other sort of light video production work. But believe it or not, today, the day that I was gearing up to start that series, my audio interface, my faithful old audio interface, decided to stop working for me today. So now we gotta make a different video. Let's get undone. What's happening, Donk Squad? I'm Gerald Undone, and today we're talking audio, but not the audio that I wanted to talk about. What? Quick little subscriber update. You may have noticed that this video came out a little bit later than they've been coming out on the rest of my schedule, and that's because I've decided to move from a 6 a.m. release time to an 8 a.m. release time, Eastern time, and I'm planning on sticking with that instead of the 6 a.m. one because I've been looking at my analytics and I think it'll actually, my videos will perform a little bit better if I release them at 8 a.m. instead. So this is gonna be the first video that came out at 8 a.m. So, this video, this video is about audio interfaces. I was gonna make a video that was uh, part one of the series of, and I'm still gonna make that video. So, uh, for those of you that ended up liking this video, make sure you subscribe if you wanna know more about audio stuff. Uh, but this video is gonna be about uh, audio interfaces, which is, in this case, what my mic is connected to. Uh, I was using the Focusrite Scarlett Solo, in my case the first gen, for the longest time, and uh, I switched today to a Steinberg UR12. And I'll explain why I did that in a minute, and I'll give you my impressions and a bit of a review of the Steinberg. Now the video I wanted to make was gonna be part one of a series of sort of a complete audio guide, like I was saying. And the audio interface was gonna be part of part one. Part one was gonna sort of talk about the, the flow, the sort of chain of custody of the sound, if you will, like, you know, start from, from the mouth, and when the sound comes out, let's go through all the steps that we need and what kind of, where the importance sort of lies on each, on each part. And early on in that step was gonna be a good audio interface. But we're gonna have to kind of jump around here with the audio interface. So, why did I switch? So, the main reason for switching to the Steinberg from the Scarlett, I said earlier that it kind of died on me. It, it didn't die, but, but it's killing my computer slowly, piece by piece. The Scarlett, and, and here's a disclaimer to anybody, this is step one of my review. If you guys are looking at what sort of, you know, small audio interface should I get, if you use a Windows-based machine, the Focusrite Scarlett models are probably not the answer for you. From what I've seen and a little bit of testing, it seems like they work fine on Mac, and the drivers are a little bit better for, for Mac OS stuff, but for Windows, I have had a plethora of blue screens. The main cause of this is driver support, which is kind of another disappointing aspect to the Scarlett, is that uh, they haven't updated the first gen of any of their stuff drivers in like four years, and uh, I don't think they're going to. See, I think that they just decided we'll just make new hardware and new hardware, and we'll just occasionally release driver updates, where the Steinberg devices actually get firmware updates, so they don't just scrap all of their previous work when when a new one comes out, they, they, they update the firmware so that you can keep your gear, you know, up to snuff, and the driver updates are much more frequent and much more current. So to give you, again, like I said, my, my Scarlett Solo, the last driver was from 2014. The driver for the Steinberg UR12 was December 2017, so just like two and a little bit months ago. So that's much more current, much more likely to mesh well with whatever Windows 10 updates you've got cooking. And that's, that's key, that's where your blue screens are coming from. The blue screen is always the same. USB audio driver, USB bug code, you know, focus right, USB, there are just different types of, of of blue screens that had to do with the USB audio interface. These guys, Steinberg, they're the ones that made the ASIO driver, essentially. They started with like Cubase and the ASIO stuff is all, so as soon as I plugged it in, it automatically had like better configuration, out of the box, ready to rock. Windows knew what was going on with this thing. When I installed my Scarlett uh, without drivers in the Windows, it came up with like an asterisk. It was like, I don't know what this device is. So, you know you're gonna get better stability if right out the gate, Windows is already built into it. Now the other thing that keeps happening to me with the Scarlett Solo is that you can change the the sample rate and the bit depth in the, in the Windows audio panel. You choose playback devices and properties. And in there, you can choose, oh, I wanna run 16 bit, 44.1 kilohertz, blah, blah, blah. But apparently, if you run the higher settings, like if you run 24-bit at 96 kilohertz, 
that that's when you maybe get into some blue screens. And that apparently if I had kept rolling that back, like I rolled it back a little bit, but I did guess I didn't roll it back enough to cut the blue screens out. But it made me think, why am I, you know, running a device that's that's twenty dollars more Canadian, by the way, than the um, than the UR12. They're they're the same model, like the same amount of inputs, outputs, and dials and everything. But the the focus rate is twenty dollars more, and pretty much every one of their tiers, it's. 20, 30 Canadian more. Why am I paying more for, you know, essentially about the same device, but then I have to, you know, handicap it in order for it to not cause blue screens on my computer. I tried running the second gen drivers. There's a second gen version of all these things and they're supposed to have better drivers. Didn't work for me. As soon as I installed those drivers, I would get random crackling and popping sounds in the, in, in, like just listen to music. If I just turn music on, you just like hear it in the background a little bit. And um, I checked the forums about that. They say the same thing. Oh, lower the sample rate, lower the sample rate. Well, you can't lower the sample rate if you're using the second gen drivers on a first gen device. You're really locked out of a lot of what you can do. And again, why am I running the sample rate 44.1 kilohertz? That's that's old, like not, that's 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 any any old tech that you have around your house right now can do 44.1. Why are you buying an audio interface if you're using the same uh, sample rate of some CD player from 25 years ago. It just doesn't make any sense. Why handicap your device? So the Steinberg, as soon as you plug it in, first of all, you cannot change the bit depth. It's 24 bit always, all the time. Uh, you can change the sample rate all the way up to 192 kilohertz instead of uh, 96 as the maximum. So you've got greater sample rate if you really need, you know, to mess with your buffer or whatever like that, which means of course, yeah, you have a greater buffer sampling that you can use. And another thing that I kind of liked about it, but maybe it's a little bit, of just an OCD thing, is that you're locked out of the Windows uh, control panel. So when you go to like properties, you know, audio devices, whatever, and you and you go to your recording devices, you choose the properties on that, and you can change. You drop down that that drop down window, and you change your 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 sample rate and stuff in there. You can't do that with the Steinberg. You have to use their control panel for the ASIO driver, and then you set it there, and it's set across like all platforms, and that's that. So then when you open up Premiere Pro and you look at your audio hardware in there. Boom, it's there, set, all your stuff is right. And then you can adjust it in there if you need to, if you want to like, you know, decrease your latency or whatever, you can set it in there. But it just, it just seems to know what's going on and everything's all integrated. And that to me just smells like stability and more care and more care for the customer as well. Because I don't like the idea of buying a product and then the company decides in six months, we're not gonna support that anymore. We're on to bigger things. Creative used to do this with their sound cards all the time. It was one of the things that annoyed the crap out of me. You couldn't get drive. If there was a new version of Windows that came out, your sound card was just dead for like two years because it was gonna take Creative a really long time to get the drivers for the new version of Windows. But they should be ahead of the game because Windows lets you know when they're gonna make new software. And obviously because of the way market share works, a lot of people are gonna install and have the new version of Windows. So if you're not willing to get on the driver train when a new version of Windows comes out, then put that on the box. Put it right on the box. We're not gonna bother messing with drivers, so don't buy us. At least let the customer have that decision rather than just having Hardware collecting dust because they decided not to update the drivers. That is one of the most infuriating things ever. And Steinberg seems to be all over the driver game. So I give him points right there. And it's cheaper. Cheaper for more capabilities and better driver and sort of a customer, you know, level stuff with that. Now, for those of you that know the Scarlet line, you're probably yelling at me. Yeah, but what about the preamps? Talk about the preamps. I will say that the Focusrite Scarlet series has probably the best preamps for the money like in their class, the sub $500, let's say, uh, price point, those are the best preamps you can get. And you kind of have to do some really heavy duty, like listening to really compare the preamps. But I went to a couple of my standbys in both music and I did some audio stuff. And uh, I would say the Steinberg is, to the average Joe, especially if you're putting this up on YouTube or whatever, not gonna notice a difference. To me, I feel like I could feel a little bit of like thinness in certain spots. Like I'm going to, I'm going to go and say 90 to 95% as good as the uh, Scarlet ones. So you could say, well, that's worth the extra 20 bucks. And I would say, yeah, yeah, maybe, you know, cosmetically to the Scarlet kind of looks cool. It's red. I like the dials on it. Another thing that's got the Scarlet going for it is the, the position of the phantom power on the front. You just press the phantom power button and it lights up and lets you know when it's on. On the Steinberg, you got to reach around the back and it's like a switch. Now I like the feeling of the switch. It's kind of fun. It's like clonk, you're like clicking it in, but you kind of got a feel for it. But I feel like I already know where it is now and I've only flicked it a few times. So it's probably something you get used to right away. Um, and it still gives you a peak warning and everything on the light, but the, the Scarlet just had a little bit more like 
like little finishing details that seem to be, you know, well thought out. So the Scarlet has nice finishing, nice cosmetics, and a little bit better of preamps. But the biggest problem is that if your computer is blue screening, it doesn't really matter how good the preamps are because your workflow just stops. Steinberg hasn't had that problem yet, and I get the feeling that it won't because the drivers are recent. It's, they, they're the guys who know ASIO drivers, and it seems to be well integrated with Windows. So short of maybe RME as a company, this is probably your go-to Windows-based interface. I think the Scarlet's probably your better answer for Mac. And value-wise, I still think the Scarlet's great. I think the Steinberg might actually be better value if it comes in a little bit cheaper and does everything. But uh, the Scarlet's great value as long as it works. And that's, that's the chief part of this review and comparison, is that it doesn't work all the time for Windows. And there's too much finagling, change in sample rates, handicap in the sample rate for work. And because blue screens like this are usually intermittent, you never know if you've actually fixed the problem until you get more blue screens and corruption. When I want an audio interface, what I'm looking for is something that gives me nice, clean uh, signals, good amplification, good inputs and outputs that I need, and doesn't crash. I just want clean, stable performance. And for Windows, I think Steinberg is the answer for that. So, I'm gonna stop this video here. This will be sort of like the, the preamble to part one of the audio series. The next video that I'm gonna do on this is gonna be, like I said, the whole, the whole chain. So starting from your voice, into the microphone, down the cable, into the interface, where it goes from there, how to capture it, what to do with it, and then from then on with other parts, we're gonna talk about then how to process the sound, you know, how to package the sound, that kind of stuff. But the next video is gonna be the overall chain with the interface being a part of it. And I'll be able to reference this video and say, if you saw in the previous video, I'm not using the Steinberg and go check that video out if you wanna know why. So please subscribe if you're interested in seeing the rest of the audio stuff that I'm gonna do. My videos come out Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sunday. So Sunday will be the next part, part one of the original series. Uh, so if you're interested in audio, I really suggest that you check back on Sunday and then watch that series because I think it'll be really helpful to you guys if you want to step up your audio game. And we're gonna go over the whole thing from the ground up. As usual, if you found this video useful or entertaining, make sure you drop it a like. And if you did not find it useful or entertaining, Go ahead and hit the dislike button twice. And I think that's that. All right, I'm done.